everyone, my name is Keely and I'm the owner and creator here at Soy and Shea and thank you so much for joining me. Now along with lip balms, one of the first bath and body products I ever taught myself to make was a foaming face scrub. When I gave up work five years ago, it was one of those sort of more luxury items in the bathroom that I gave up buying but really missed having as part of my morning routine. So I decided to do a bit of research and see if I could create one using any of the ingredients that I was starting to accumulate in my little making room. And I was absolutely delighted to find out that it is really easy, quick and simple to make a foaming face scrub. I need to do a really small top up for our, my market shelf so I thought I would take you along today as I make my foaming face scrub with activated charcoal and Australian green clay. Let's go! Right, so my foaming face scrub is really quick and easy to make. What I've got in my bowl here is some foaming bath butter and you can use any of the pre-made bases that are available on the market, but if you're like me and you like to make your own bases from scratch so you can control the ingredients, um, why not check out Sandra's recipe from DIY Bath and Body and I'll leave links to her site down below. She's on Etsy and she has this most amazing recipe that you can make this foaming bath butter yourself. And if you want to see how I actually put her recipe together, up in the top right hand corner I will leave a link to my foaming sugar scrub video and you can see me actually make my base from scratch. Now normally when you use a foaming bath butter you would whip it up and you would create a whip soap or a foaming sugar scrub or something like that. With my face scrub I decided I didn't want to whip this up because I wanted to get as much product into the tube as I possibly could and I didn't want the air actually interfering with each batch of how much um, product I could get into the tube each time. So we're not actually going to whip this today, we're just going to use a really good spatula and we're going to stir in all of our ingredients into it. The first thing I'm going to add in, in this little jar here, I have some fractionated coconut oil, which I really like as a nice moisturising oil that doesn't leave the skin feeling greasy. It's a really lightweight oil. And the darker patches that you can see in here is some chamomile extract. When I first developed this foaming um, face scrub it was for myself um, and I just eventually ended up selling it after giving it to people to try um, and I wanted something that could actually start to relieve some of the itchiness and the soreness that I was getting on my skin. Now obviously I can't make those claims on my products but it was one of the sort of reasonings for putting it in was that the chamomile extract is known for its soothing abilities and it really did help my skin out by adding that chamomile in. So I'm just going to give that a little bit of a mix just to incorporate it all. And then I am going to add in my botanicals. Now, right, so I know a lot of you are going to ask me for the recipe for this foaming face scrub. And to be honest, it's so simple that I'm not going to really give you a complete recipe because I really think you should have a go and just jump in and have a play with things. The foaming bath butter of this makes up 85% of the recipe because that is the main part of the scrub, it's the actual cleaning part of it. And I use 6% of the carrier oil in here, so that's 91%. The rest of the 9% is up to you what you put in. I do put another 0.5% preservative in here just to cover the extra ingredients that I'm adding into the bath butter here. And that is actually loaded in with my essential oil blend. And I'm using rosemary, grapefruit and tea tree for my essential oil in here. I really love tea tree um, as a facial sort of essential oil. I like the qualities that it is supposedly meant to have. But a lot of people don't like straight up tea tree smell. So I mix that in with that rosemary and that grapefruit just to give it that slightly different, fresher smell. And um, my customers seem to really like that sort of blend together. So I'll get that mixed in. And then the other additives that I am adding in here. I have some Australian green olive clay. It is meant to be one of the strongest of the clays and is supposedly good for detoxifying. The main reason I put it in is most people that are going to use a scrub are going to have oily, acne prone skin. And this particular clay is meant to be very good for that skin type. I also have some activated charcoal and this is an organic one and it's quite grainy so it adds to the scrubby sort of effect and again charcoal is meant to be known for its detoxifying um, abilities. 
For some other exfoliants, I have some apricot kernel um, granules and I also have some walnut shell. Now if you're looking to avoid any of the nut products, you can use any combination of natural exfoliants that you like. I prefer to have natural exfoliants in my facial scrub as opposed to sugar. It's just something I can't quite get my head around is putting sugar in as a facial sort of scrub. I prefer to have something a lot more natural on my face. But of course you can use whatever you prefer to have in your facial scrub. But that really is all there is to it. So I'm going to get this mixed in and then I'm going to get it into a piping bag so I can put it into my tubes. Alright, so I've just popped that into one of my biodegradable piping bags here and I'm just going to cut off the very smallest tip and that is so that it just makes it a bit easier to get into the tubes that I have so that it doesn't go absolutely everywhere and I'm just going to push this down to the tip of the bag and then we're going to start filling our tubes. I might just cut just a little bit off more off. I think I've been a little bit too cautious there. That's better. It's moving a bit better. And what I like to use for my face scrubs, I have these tubes here. I've just always preferred to have them in a tube as opposed to a jar, so you're not trying to undo jars in the shower with wet hands. This is just nice and easy to flip the top open and squeeze out some scrub. So what I'm going to do, I've just popped that onto my scales, teared it out, and then all I do now is just squeeze this into the, my tubes and I'm going to fill these ones up to about 85 grams. used these containers in the past or these tubes I've had lots of questions about where I get them from I get them from New Directions Australia unfortunately I don't see that New Directions aromatics in America actually do stock them so I'm not sure where you can get these tubes from in America but for anyone in Australia that's interested these are from New Directions um, Australia and they are really easy to fill. The trick to filling them up and um, getting as much product into them as possible is as you start to squeeze, squeeze really hard so that you end up with this downward pressure pushing your product into them and getting rid of any air gaps. And then you can actually get a decent amount of product into them without too much effort. Alright, so I am only making four of these today. What I've got left over here is that I can do my little sample jar up because I've run out of my one that I do for markets. And then all of this, we don't really need a lot in there. It's more just for smelling rather than using. And then what I've got left over in here, I have these little Mylar bags and I get these from off of eBay. I'm just going to get this one open. I might actually take one of my gloves off to do that because that's better and then oops we just squeeze some of these into the mylar bags and then I will use my heat sealer just to seal them back up and these will get given out as samples that's a nice generous one in there I'm just getting this enough there for another little sample so again just open it up and push the rest of that down and into this little mylar bag. All right, so I am going to go and get the labels ready and then we'll come back and finish these off. All right, so I have my little mylar bags all sealed up, so I'm going to start with those ones first. On the front, I just pop on a label about what's in there, and then on the back, I just have my directions for use and ingredients. Now, in Australia, you don't really have to actually include ingredients with any samples, but I like to include them just in case someone does have an allergy to one of the ingredients. It really doesn't make much sense to me why it is not a legal requirement to provide um, ingredients with samples. So I'm going to get those ones stuck on there and they'll go into my little sample box and they'll go out with some orders. And then it is time to 
label up my tubes. So I have my labels here and as I've mentioned in other videos I do all of my own labels. I use Corel Draw to design my labels in and then I purchase my, most of my labels come from a place called um, Labels on Sheets here in Australia and these particular labels which are polymer labels come from off a supplier on eBay and I really love how these are actually waterproof and they just go on to products so much more differently to how paper labels go on they just have that little bit more of a professional look as a polymer so I'm just going to finish wrapping that one around stick it down and there is our first one all labeled up now I often get requests from people to do a label video. The reason I don't do a label video is because the actual requirements for labeling is very much so a legal process and I don't want to give wrong information about it. I don't want to give wrong information about anything, but particularly when it comes to labeling because every country has its own rules and then if you are in a country that has different states, um, different states have different rules and regulations as well. So for example, I know in Canada you have to have it in English and in French. Um, in some countries you can only write ingredients in what is called their INSEE format. I'm not even going to try and pronounce the full name of that because it's just a little bit too complicated. Here in Australia, we do get the choice. We can either list things in their English names or their INSEE formats, but you can't combine them. So once you start writing your list in one way, you have to keep to that specific way. And most countries do say that you need to list them, your ingredients from largest to smallest, and anything under 1% can be listed in any particular order at all. There's always a lot of debate about how things like colour should be written and things like that. I like to make sure that every single piece of information is on my labels to make sure that um, any allergies are actually covered. I always on my labels have a little blurb about what the product is in any of sort of the main features. I always have the directions for use. I have my ingredients list. I always have a warning and because I have dealt with nut products in the past and I have soy in my shed as well, they will always say that it may contain traces of nut oils or soy. With this particular one, because I've got the nut shell in there, it does say that it contains nuts. I have the best used before and batch date on there as well. And on the front, I usually, well, you have to have the weight listed. Um, you also have to have other details such as where it is made. And I just put down exactly what it is in any of those key benefits on the front of the label too. But when it comes to labeling, you really do need to make sure that you brush up with whatever your um, country and your country's state's rules and regulations are. Please don't blindly follow information that is given in Facebook groups because if you are caught out and you have something wrong on there because you followed someone's advice in a Facebook group, you are not covered. You, your insurance just will not cover you if anything does go wrong. Whenever I have had questions here in Australia, I go straight to the actual governing bodies and I put it in an email to them. Most of the time they will come back with answers and for those that are a little bit more ambiguous, they generally say go and speak to a lawyer. So it can be a little bit um, confusing, a little bit hard, but it really is very important to make sure that you're getting your labels done up according to whatever your state on your country has said. All right, so now just to finish these off very quickly, I like to seal all of these up so it keeps them nice and hygienic. It also stops people from using little bits out of the tube when at the market so I can make sure that everyone has got the exact weight of what is meant to be in this product. So I'm just going to put my little band around there and then heat it with the heat gun. Is my foaming face scrub all done up and ready to go out on the shelf. I hope you've enjoyed this really quick video and I hope it's given you another idea of how that you 
you can actually use your foaming bath butter. Um, if you did enjoy watching this video, why not leave me a thumbs up and any comments down below. If you are new around here, we do bring out weekly soap making videos as well as other bath and body videos along the way. So if you hit that um, subscribe button, it will let you know the next time I bring a video out. So until Saturday's video, I hope you have a great week and I'll see you then. Bye.